That's to remove the illusion. Step number one, guys, price everything in gold. So it's a bit of a historic precedent. Was it really that event that caused the value to go up? The economy is going to start suffering pain. Okay, it's uh, Kevin Wadsworth and Patrick Grimm from NorthStarBadCharts.com. Welcome to the show. This is Talking Trades. And uh, Patrick, we're going to talk today about uh, gold and we're going to talk about how it protects against purchasing power destruction. Do you want to show us some charts to uh, to illustrate exactly what it does when uh, we're seeing the US dollar lose its value? Well, that's right. Look, this is one probably one of the biggest misconceptions or I don't know what you want to call it, uh, market fallacies. It's um, gold is just a rock. Gold does not do anything. It hasn't gone up in price enough. It's uh, marginally above. It's uh, you know 2011 highs, even more so for silver, right? But what I tell people is that's when you're too close to the steering wheel because us as, as chart traders, we need data, right? And now we have hundreds of years of data. And I'm, I'm going to show you a chart, Kevin, like you've, you've probably seen that chart. It's going to really show people what gold does, what silver does, and you got to start measuring stuff in non-fiat, right? Measuring gold, silver, oil, but you got to start measuring it in something outside of fiat because fiat over long periods of time, the recipe has been destruction of purchasing power, right? Your fiat will be losing purchasing power for whatever reason, right? Inflation or versus other currencies. And you think, oh, my, my house went up in value. I made some money. Oh, uh, oil so expensive. Now it's... Uh, whatever, $100 a barrel, it's so expensive. But if the fiat you're using to purchase that that barrel of oil or that house has lost value, then you're not you're not richer, right? Because you won't be able to buy a piece of bread as much. You know, everything's going to be more expensive. So that's to remove the illusion. Step number one, guys, price everything in gold. When Pat says that uh, fiat is losing value, he's talking about obviously what you can buy with your dollar or your pound or your euro. Everything around us is uh, seemingly going up in price. That's how people see it. Of course, it's not things going up in price. It's your paper currency uh, being able to purchase less. And gold over the years has done a very, very good job of tracking that loss of purchasing power. If you want to protect your purchasing power, this chart that Pat's uh, showing you right now, go on, Pat, you uh, explain that. that. That's right, right. So this is data from 1968. Uh, gold before 1968, 1971, it was pegged. So I'll be showing you a chart of silver, pricing stuff in silver, because silver, it was more free floating and we have data going back to the late 1800s. So essentially this is the average, it's the price of a single family home in the United States. Uh, the black line guys is how much it costs you in US dollars, right? So back here, it was about $24,000, 1968. And just year for year, it keeps going up, keeps going up. Here's a little period where it went sideways. And then we're at 412, 410,000 guys for a single family home in the United States. And you say, oh my goodness, that's so expensive. But the house hasn't changed really, right? It's a single family house, right? It's not, doesn't have more garages. It's practically the same thing. It's get, the amenities of the house is giving you the same value it did 10 years ago, 20 years ago, like, or even 60 years ago, you're getting the same amenities, right? So now what you got to do to remove that fiat illusion, you got to price in gold. So here's my left scale, guys. This is the number of ounces required to purchase that single family home. And yes, there's cycles where gold appreciates. So now the, the, the single family home requires less ounces of gold. Then there, there's periods where gold the price depreciates in, in fiat. You know, these are cyclical cycles within like, you know, secular or super, super cycles. But over long periods of time, my arrow is practically gone sideways, right? Depending where I started, but it oscillates left and right, highs and lows. It's a channel going sideways. So the quantity of ounces of gold required to buy that single family home, it ranges, it doesn't depreciate. And that's why gold preserves your purchasing power. You don't need more ounces of gold necessarily like the fiat chart. You know, if gold would, would not preserve your purchasing power, Kevin, it would look like this. It would look like the fiat chart, right? You just need more and more and more ounces of gold to purchase that same house, right? So are you, are you telling me, Pat, that the house hasn't got more expensive over the last 50 years? Yeah. Can you, can you imagine what kind of world we would be living in if we could use gold as currency, if we could actually transact in gold? And, uh, of course, that's exactly what we can do now. So that's quite useful to, uh, to me and everybody listening to, to this, of course. But, yeah, I mean, wow, look at that. A, a house has not gone up in price if you're buying it with gold. And uh, that kind of, out of all of the charts that, that we have, I think that really illustrates and brings it home to people 
just exactly what gold and uh, and also silver and precious metals generally do over the years. Yeah, it's incredible. And it really, uh, that visual, it really st- strikes home that point because people, they, they're, they're too close to the steering wheel, right? They're in the day-to-day lives. They, if you go on Yahoo, the data, you have like three months of data, six months of data, and then people can't see these longer term uh, pictures, right? And look here, I have it priced in silver. I have the price of silver since 1861. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm pricing in crude oil. So let's say barrel of crude oil. Like everybody says, oh, barrel of crude oil. Like your grandparents could say it was less than $2 in the 1960s, right? You hear these stories, right? And the price of crude oil, price in fiat, that's my the, the green line, bottom left, top right. So it requires more and more fiat to purchase that same barrel of oil, right? That same oil, which runs your car, your heating, whatever you're using it for. It's costing you more and more in fiat. But look, I'm pressing it in silver and it ranges. Look, my arrow goes from left to right. There's, there's cyclical cycles for the price of silver. But over long periods of time, it'll get you the same amount of silver ounces, guys. Just like the one here I'm holding my hand to purchase that same barrel of oil. So stackers rejoice. Gold stackers, silver stackers, you have the data behind you that over long periods of time, that's what, uh, that's why people stack. It's to protect their purchasing power. So they'll be able to buy the same goods over long periods of time. They'll give that wealth to their kids. They'll be able to buy the same house, to buy the same barrel of oil, name it. And they won't be holding fiat, which will, which has depreciated like year after year, like for 40, 50, 60, 80 years, uh, the fiat has been, uh, the person power has been eroded, guys. There you go. That's a light bulb moment, hopefully, for a, for a lot of people watching this. Thanks for uh, joining us. And uh, don't forget to follow for more content.